I am unashamed. What about you? Welcome back to Unashamed. Um, man, we left off with Zach doing some serious preaching. You know, I was thinking, Zach, that we, we talked about me going into the to the quote unquote wrong church. But really, if you've got a consistent message, you're never in the wrong place. You're just maybe not in the one that invited you. Because I got to think about it. If if the folks at the next door building had asked me to give my message that I had prepared for the one next door, it still would have worked. Yeah. I mean, you know what I'm saying? I, the message is is powerful, and I could have given it wherever. If that had said, you know, when do you start over there? Well, about 30 minutes. Can you give us a little thumbnail? Hey, I'd love to. Let's line up and do this. So, I mean, I, I speak all I, I bet I've spoken at, I, I don't want to put a number on it, but different, I don't even know what we call it. I guess the philosophical word is denominations. Mm-hmm. But uh, Somebody called them tribe, different tribes. I think that's pretty good. I just kind of stick with Jesus. But, I mean, probably half my audiences are not church people. Yeah. Now, that's where it gets interesting because... They actually listen better. The message of Jesus travels well. <laughs> it does. <laughs> it does. <laughs> so that's that's why you know I used to be nervous because I'm I'm a shy guy, you know, and I always start off my speeches saying, you know, my biggest fear, kind of the celebrate recovery moment, you know, is I struggle with public speaking. Yeah, but at this point, you know, I've lost the nervousness as far as, as it depends on me. I mean, I think you always should be a little nervous because you're talking about things that will alter your eternal dwelling. Well, and you're speaking on behalf of God. So yeah, yeah. you ought to take that pretty serious. But I mentioned yesterday that I always, when I'm talking about an unashamed life, I remember the first time that I remember you talking about Jesus in a public setting. And it happened to be in the same city that I had left out of, and turn my life around in New Orleans. But, you know, you, you you were there to show people how to blow a duck call, but you decided since you had a group of people together, it's like, well, I might as well just tell them about what I believe about Jesus. And so you went into it, and it stunned them. It stunned me. It stunned our guy that we were with down there. But the only person who wasn't stunned was you, because you were just like, well, why not? I got a group of people here. Why not tell them about it? And so that had a huge impact on me because I was like, well, you can talk about this anywhere. About five preachers said, come to our church and. That's right. What you said. Because we want to invite some people in. They were thinking just what they saw. They thought, well, this will be pretty good. We'll just get people to come in here. What was funny is Phil always would do his duck call seminar. And then he he would say, you know, I got paid to do that, but I'm going to give you this for free. And then you would tell them about Jesus. Yep. But what I found fascinating now, when you talked about going to the wrong church, I was with Phil one night when he went and spoke. I was just kind of back before the days we had handlers. The family was the handler, yeah. you know, and I went with him. And Phil sitting on the front row, you know, there's hundreds of people fixing to hear him speak. And one of the pastors of the church comes up to Phil and gives him directions to the homeless shelter down the road <laughs> because he thought Phil had just stumbled in as a homeless person That's right. and was sitting on the front row. Yeah. And so that just shows you if somebody doesn't know who you are, you don't belong. <laughs> <laughs> I bet he was embarrassed when Phil walked up on stage as the keynote speaker. Well, yeah, that, that, was his, that was his opening line. <laughs> Phil was like, hey. Some some uh, guy. No, I think he said somebody missed a memo that I was coming, and uh, he said, "But now I know where your homeless shelter is because I was directed there." <laughs> and then he did a little deal about don't judge a book by its cover. It was it was kind of. And the guy was mortified. He was. It was like, and as as I recall, a few people, you know, actually came to Christ that night. Oh yeah. And so it was like, wow, literally, don't judge a book by its cover. I mean, we've all had our moments. I got escorted out of the Trump Hotel, you know, as being a person that just didn't belong. You were unseemly. Yeah. But we worked it out. We worked and it we out. Got, we got over it. Yeah. Don't judge a book by its cover. You got that, Zach? I got it. Don't judge a book by its cover. Phil, did you know when you got up there that first time in a 
non-church setting that were you planning like i'm gonna i'm gonna give him something here or was it or was it, did it just it, come it to just you in the kinda, moment it just came forth yeah but it was so interesting phil i remember back to those like we used to go to those du banquets and some of those uh risque is not a strong enough word i mean uh, strippers and, and yeah just right. raunchy and when you get up and share jesus in that environment you know, there is an adrenaline rush because I had the same experience many times after I saw Phil do that. But I thought, you know, is, is this not what we were talking about last podcast about we're supposed to be representing heaven itself, mm -hmm. Jesus enthroned and, and work to be done. And even I didn't read the Ephesians six ten Al, but you brought it up, you know, after the podcast, you know, finally be strong in the Lord. And in his mighty power, put on the full armor of God. I mean, that's what you do when you declare Jesus, especially in those types of settings, which is why we wear these hats, Al, who someone is sending them to us in the mail and we're reading them because yesterday on the airport all day or a day before yesterday, uh, people constantly were saying, w what is that? Well, you know, I just had multiple Jesus presentations in the airports. Yeah. And then when I got home, we were hosting six college kids from Pepperdine who sang that they led worship uh yesterday at church. Yeah. And but they were staying at my house. Right. I come rolling in there about nine o'clock and uh of course I walked in and, and there was a young man there, you know, eating at my table, and I said, Who are you? And he said, who are you? I said, I live here. <laughs> <laughs> this is my point. And uh, he, he told me who he was. And I was like, oh, that, that's good. And the next question, he said, what, what, what's that mean on your hat? I thought, well, if he's staying at my house, this is a perfect <laughs> question. And as I started the presentation, they all gathered up. And, uh, and of course, they were believers. But yeah. they seemed fired up about it, which... As tired as I was, it started about a two-hour conversation on how we're going to move the needle as spirit-filled people on this earth in Jesus. And I thought, you know, if I can't take time out and talk to six college age, because I, I don't have much time left, but they got a bunch of time, Lord willing. <laughs> and uh, so I was really excited, which is why I went to that and hear them sing, which they were awesome. Well, what's ironic, Jace, is you didn't know this. But the guy that makes these hats, Brian, a, a good friend of ours, the name of his deal where he makes hats and T-shirts, which trying to provoke people to talk about, it, you know what it's called? It's called 611 Armory, and it's based on, guess what, Ephesians 611. Are you kidding me? No. I'm liking is, this guy more and more already. Which is exactly where you just were in the text. The next verse he based his whole business on. By the way, he gives all the profits from it to mission work around the world. So if you ever want to check them out, 611 Army as well. Yeah, I'd like to give prizes. I, I did a first in my speech uh, Saturday, and I don't know why I did it. it I, I got up there, and uh, I guess because the cell phone, I, I've told y'all, you know, I told you this crazy story on, when I was going through the roundabout, and there's a woman almost hit me. And when I looked at her, she had a cheeseburger in one hand and a cell phone in the other and was we driving with her knees and looked at me like, what are you getting all bent out of shape about? But, and, and I just noticed. And, and what was in both hands can kill. That's the thing. I was like, what are we doing here? You know, I'm trying to survive. And, uh, and now uh, the guy, the security guy that I had on this uh, venture that I went on, he, he was a cop. And I was like, what's the number one thing you're pulling people over for? And he's like, they're looking at their cell phone driving off the road. I was like, oh, you're pulling people over that? I said, because every five cars I pass, that's the problem. Right. And he's like, oh, yeah. He said, we're just every day. And I was like, what's a fine on that? And he said, $900. And I was Ooh. like, woohoo. I said, get them. <laughs> but, uh, but anyway, I did something I'd never done. I got up there and I said, who brought their Bible this morning? It was a 1,000 men. And I was surprised. I would say probably a 100. But of course, they raised their hand, and I said, "Raise your Bible if you brought." I'm asking. I want to see it, you know. Yeah. And so, and I said, "How many people here under 21 years of age brought their Bible?" Because I was just curious in our social media world. 
Well, the only, and it was dark and I couldn't see very good, but there was a guy on the front row, you yeah. know, it raised his Bible. And he kind of did it in a way like, yeah. I got it. And I said, I'm, I'm giving you something. Well, I looked down and I didn't have anything to give him. <laughs> and so I reached in my back pocket and I pulled out and I had a $20 bill. <laughs> I said, come up here. So you're giving cash prizes now at your event? I I said, look, y'all know I'm not a preacher (laughs) because I'm actually giving you money for being here. And uh, and just in a moment, I just, I looked down at the 20 and and I I thought about the message on there. Yeah. And I said, I want you to read that because I can't see three feet in front of me. I can see everything else. Yeah. And he said, in God we trust. And I said, the fact that you're 19 years old and you, you're you carrying your Bible around, because I know it's a lot more difficult to live a bold life for Jesus at 19. I said, I'm giving you this $20, but only because of that message on there, because I think you can handle the responsibility on whatever you do with this money. I want you to read it again and say, God, we trust. Everybody cheered, you know, and I thought, that, that turned out to be a pretty good illustration. You were just taking that what you had. You were taking what you had and turned it into a little less of that. That's, that's, pretty, that's what it is. Off his head. Well, so, Brian, if you're listening out there, Jason needs some hats to give away, or else he's going to go broke. Yeah. Given a, <laughs> well, I've never done that before, but I thought that old boy is probably pretty happy that he showed up. Well, Dad, the Dad doesn't do a lot of events anymore, but one of the last ones he did, he uh, he threw his duck calls into the audience and uh, just decided to give them away. But I know I saw the video of it, and it scared me to death because he kind of did it like a hammer throw, like he was whipping those things around and then threw it out in the audience. And I thought, did anybody get hurt? That that looked like a lawsuit waiting to happen. So that's what happens when you don't have gifts. A little scramble where it hit. Yeah, yeah, I can. I saw the video, and I thought uh, somebody might have got hurt. Those young people leaving, being thrown, and it's. It, it was his original call. Some of them he's had for, on that land. Well, I once said the greatest moments in my life were when there there was an element of danger involved. Yep. So, yep. yeah. So That's when what... you fire something off to the crowd, I guess we can use that as the platform. So, uh, so I see now on, the, on my our monitor, we had, our guest has arrived. We got a guest on the podcast, and so uh, we're excited about that. So when we come back from this break, I'll introduce you to uh, who's going to be with us on the Unashamed podcast today. So uh, we like to support businesses that love America. I think that's safe to say. And one of our sponsors, Jace, is a group called Patriot Mobile. Uh, And they've been around for quite a while. They're America's only Christian conservative wireless provider. Uh, And they've been doing it for over 10 years, which is fantastic. So we like supporting these guys. They offer dependable nationwide coverage. They give you the ability to access all three major networks. You get the coverage you're used to, but you don't have to fund left-wing causes, which we like that. When you switch to Patriot Mobile, you're letting everyone know you support free speech, religious freedom, sanctity of life, Second Amendment, military veterans, and first responders, all the things that matter to us. So they have a 100% U.S.-based customer service team that makes switching to Patriot Mobile easy you can keep your number and your phone, or you can upgrade. They will find the best plan and the best deal that fits your needs. Go to patriotmobile.com slash Phil, or you can call them at 972-PATRIOT. You get free activation when you use the offer code Phil. So join us, make the switch today, patriotmobile.com slash Phil. That's patriotmobile.com slash Phil, or you can call them at 972-PATRIOT. Welcome back. Uh, we have our guest, John Radzwilla. Is that did I get it right? You did. You Radzwilla. did. Thanks. It's uh, like Godzilla, just a cool factor. Just a cool factor. That was my first yeah. thought. Your name is proof that dinosaurs really did exist. <laughs> <laughs> and it rode skateboards. Radzwilla. <laughs> Radzwilla. He was rad. He was Willa. I love it. <laughs> John is the uh, he is the founder, co-founder as well as CEO of Hook and Barrel. Which is a, a great magazine, and I think our, does our what does our brother Willie have to do with you? Because when I went to look at the magazine and kind of look a, a little bit into you, John, I noticed there was my brother Willie right there front and center. So how, what what does he do for you guys? <laughs> well, all right. So first off, uh, thanks for having me on, Willie. 
Man, when we first started the magazine, uh, Willie was on the cover of our 2019 September October issue. And um, so from there, man, I think we've had everybody, and I'm so glad to actually get Jace, you in an issue as well. Um, we actually had Willie on the cover again of our January issue here with the Buckmen uh, of this past year. And, um, Willie has always but, been a cover guy. John. He, he loves yeah. to be on the cover of anything. I mean, <laughs> it, it could just be, you know, a, a magazine. It could be a television show. He's a, he's a cover guy. That's what I love about this. Cause when I did this article and it was about treasure hunting, you know, I have the treasure hunting show, duck family treasure. And, Y'all are nice enough to do an article about me because you're promoting our season three being launched on July 26th on Fox Nation. Yep. And uh, I said, well, it's about time you get me on the cover. <laughs> and uh, they said, no, you're not on the cover. You're in the back. <laughs> uh, but <laughs> but it kind of goes along with, you know, your role in this. And I'm like, you know, you're exactly right. Uh, let Willie get on the cover. <laughs> I'll be deep into really the meaningful part of the magazine. <laughs> you're you're in what's called the feature well in our in our world. Ooh, it's the, like it's the three most important stories of the magazine, including the cover story. Yeah, you're well, like in the meat and potatoes of it, Jace. I just know from you know if you look at the cover of the Bible, that's one thing. <laughs> but if you read it, oh wow, that that's where the meat is. Yeah, <laughs> and actually, oh. Phil, you and I have crossed paths before too. You did a. Uh, a radio interview with my buddy Brian Glenn and we interviewed you and actually we um I we did an April Fools prank with you. Uh, -oh. uh we they had they had said that we needed to have food when your for you guys when your whiskers <laughs> get this long you tend to forget things. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, don't know, I don't know how you forgot the sushi, dragon fruit, and venom energy drink we brought instead of the Chick Fil A we promised to prank you. But you were you were definitely a. a well, I haven't heard a this man story. Of, Tell us oh, the story. Yeah. Todd. Did he try so, any of this? Well, you know, it was it was kind of funny because so Phil comes in and and we're like, oh, you know, everyone's kind of scrambling, and they're like, hey, did you get his lunch? Did you get his lunch? And uh, because whoever the handler for your book tour was, was like, he needs to have lunch. So we're like, yeah, they'll, you know, we'll, we'll grab Chick-fil-A, you know? And so we'll, we'll grab whatever we could get. But I was like, we're going to take it a step further because it's actually April Fool's. And uh, we went, I got some sushi, uh, a weird dragon fruit from, from the store <laughs> and a, and a, the angriest looking energy drink I get. It was, a, it was a venom energy drink. <laughs> and he took one look at that. And I remember Phil and I was like, I was wondering if you were going to, I don't know, you, you kind of have this position or this disposition about you, you kind of scare somebody the first time you meet them. And I was like, I don't know how he's going to react to this, but you actually sat down and definitely man of the Lord sat down and actually, I believe your prayer went something along the lines of, uh, you know, Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for this food. Please bless the hands that brought it wh whatever it is <laughs> something along those lines and uh, uh you, you roll the punches then we brought out the chick-fil-a i bet he didn't partake in that first round uh, no not one so bit, dad did man. you even know there's such a thing as april fools on april 1st i heard through about it you know for, for years so <laughs> for years i didn't pay any attention you to just it. didn't participate <laughs> you didn't you. you're not no. pranking a lot of people do you go down and prank jimmy red and some of the locals oh welcome to the redneck world <laughs> <laughs> he he it was a hard op out opt out on the yeah. part of phil i love that but, i have never heard that story i didn't well, realize that i was probably somewhere in the vicinity but i missed it so tell us a little bit about the magazine just kind of how you, why you started it uh, what you guys are trying to accomplish with it before we get into jace's piece well hook and barrel is a lifestyle and entertainment magazine for modern outdoorsmen and it was started years ago um it's kind of a long story, but I'll try to keep it short. So basically, I was working a job that I was getting really burned out by. And I thought to myself, you know, I wish there was a... Because I was working in the media and I was trying to get things placed. And as I sat down and kind of thought about where I wanted to place my clients, I, I never could find the resource. And there's a lot of great outdoor magazines that talk about the niches of hunting and fishing and the specific... Uh, critters we're targeting targeting as outdoorsmen and then there's all the lifestyle magazines like the gqs the maxims the the men's healths the men's journals and those definitely um uh let's just say don't necessarily agree with a lot of my values yep. and um 
I I got up from the from the bar I was sitting at, and uh, I went across the street to Barnes and Noble, and I thought to myself, "Is there a redneck GQ?" And there wasn't. <laughs> I, I went I went through it. I'm like, but what would this even look like? I'm like, it would have famous people on the cover. It would have food and drink. It would have the personalities, the musicians, some travel destinations, some fashion, which would most likely be like, you know, camouflage and uh-huh. the gear that we're going to wear. Like, what would this look like? So I went through and I found like garden and gun and I, and that that's way more garden than it is gun. And then I went through and I found, you know, recoil and that's way more tactical and law enforcement. And I found all these other great publications, but nothing was a lifestyle and entertainment magazine for outdoorsmen in a general interest read. Hmm. And so, uh, I, I think I purchased a few of them and just kind of went back. I went back to the restaurant I was at and the waitress was in the corner doing her college work. And, uh, I said, Hey, give me a piece of that paper. And I start sketching out a logo and I sketched out a logo and wrote a little business plan and, uh, went home to my wife and I said, look, honey, I know, I know we're a little bit burned out with what we're doing here. And, uh, this is my idea. This is, this is the next great thing. And she looked at me and she's like, do you know anything about magazines? I said, absolutely not. I think that's going to be the genius here. Um, <laughs> and I'm not going to repeat the same old, same old. And, uh, she, uh, she believes in me and she signed on within, I think 30 seconds of me pitching her the idea. And she said, let's go. And, um, year one was really hard because you can't get advertising if you don't have distribution yeah. and you can't get distribution unless you have advertising. advertising. Yeah. Well, there's one other way to do that and that's called tap into your life savings. And, um, so what we did, <laughs> and that's called is, commitment. John. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's called taking a good, that's why it says nobody cares work harder behind you on the like, screen. This is getting into yes. the burning the ship story, you know? <laughs> yeah. We burn the ships. Yeah, for sure. We figured it out. No. And so uh, the way that the magazine games play just work, it works like this. So, if you have a magazine, let's say you have 100,000 for easy math, you pay for your space on your shelf, and then what doesn't sell, you buy back, and you bring back in-house, and you recycle or do whatever with, right? And so a good sell-through, let's say, is like 18 to 22%. Like 22% is we're very excited about this issue, how well it sell, sold through. And I'm like, so what do you do with the rest? Like You buy them back, and you shred them. Well, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. So let's yeah. not do it that way. And so what we decided to do is we were going to give them away for free in what we call a controlled circulation. But I just didn't want to throw them out in the doctor's offices and the local coffee shops hoping an outdoorsman picks them up. I mean, that that's just that's just chaos. It's called yeah. littering, in my opinion. So right. I spent a while and um, I managed to, through a few relationships, get all of the Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's in Texas. And I'm like, this is where it's going to start. Mm-hmm. So... We stroked the biggest check of our adult lives at about 34. And the rule was you could not ever have an empty rack. And they had to be on the rack for two years. And we had Martin Truex Jr. on the cover. He had just won. And um, they were gone in two weeks. Like, uh (laughs) uh-oh. We got a problem. Uh, Start start stroking a bigger check. And my wife's like, well, how are we going to do that? (laughs) We're not really selling a whole lot of advertising. And, uh, well, you know, as like, again, you know, nobody cares, work harder. We just worked and worked and worked. And y'all are men of faith. And our, our pastor has a saying that, you know, you do the natural, God will do the supernatural. And I mm. think every day and everything that I do, I'm able to look myself in the mirror and go, I've left it all on the floor. There, there's nothing here. And, and that's what we did in the beginning. We just, we just, we, there were nights, we got to a point where our mortgage was overdue. We had no food. We were like hugging each other at night, crying, like, what are we going to do? <laughs> and um, to save all the, the inside baseball of the, the things that happened and the, the, the trials we had to endure and, and figure out, uh, we made a few choice decisions that allowed us to cut a few people and, and things that weren't going necessarily right for us and where we were going to take advantage of. And uh, the, the ship started to turn. And mm. by about issue five, we, we broke even. And then we're like, wow, we actually didn't lose money on this deal. And um, by issue six, we made a couple thousand bucks. And we're like, wow, we could actually eat tonight. <laughs> and yeah. uh, and things got easier. And the next issue got easier. The next issue got easier. And I think God just kept doing the supernatural. And you know, we were talking about it. And I, I will be the first to admit, guys, I am 
I'm a very faithful person. I probably don't know the Bible as well as I should, though. Um, this was the first first book I bought for my son was the Sportsman's Bible. I wrote him a letter in here, and it says all that you need to know is in this book. I love it. I um, wrote him a great little note when he figures out how to read someday. Right now, he just wants to draw on it, and I have to hide it in a drawer somewhere from him. But, <laughs> yeah. um, but you know, it. We would anytime we would have something terrible happen to us. I took it as a sign that the devil was getting in the way of God's plan. And I would get excited because I knew that we were on the right path anytime something bad happened. Because if we were on the right path and something bad happened, that was the devil trying to get in our way. And I, mm. and I would get strangely excited because I was like, you know what? Bring it on, devil, because I am a competitor. I am a fighter. I work hard when nobody cares anyway. And I will... I will grind until literally I have nothing absolutely left. And that's what you need to do to fight the devil. And, uh, but I'm like, bring it on. And that used to be my saying almost bring it on because I knew I was on the right path. And that's, and today we're America's fastest growing outdoor magazine for, you know, lifestyle and entertainment. We're in almost every single state. We have over a hundred or over 75,000 in circulation, soon to be a hundred thousand by the end of the year. Uh, 200 and 20, 230, something like that thousand digital subscribers. And, that's awesome. You know, it's a testament to God's work and our hard work, man. We did all we can. Yeah. We still do all we can in the natural. So, Jay, so you're living a balanced life these days. Well, I try to. Uh, you know, the older you get, the more you realize having some kind of exercise mm-hmm. and a healthy diet. With, yep. But there's just so much junk out there that's so tempting now. That's right. I know those temptations. <laughs> the bottom line is we don't get enough fruits and vegetables, and that's where balance of nature comes in. Exactly. It's about balance. Uh, and, you know, you need more than you can actually physically eat with actual fruits and vegetables. I'm sure there's someone out there that could. But for most of us, especially when we're on the go, um, you know, we need something to help us get that, and that's what balance of nature does. Another thing we love about them is they hadn't raised their prices in 10 years. So they're even fighting the inflation trend. They have a proprietary blend of 31 fruits and vegetables. They come in easy to swallow capsules that will give your body much of the nourishment that it needs. So check them out. When you go to balanceofnature.com, you're going to get 35% off plus a free fiber and spice supplement with your first order as a preferred customer by using the discount code Phil, You'll save a ton of money while getting the fruits and vegetables you need in your diet. Make a splash into summer with Balance of Nature supplements. Go to balanceofnature.com, sign up as a new preferred customer. Use the promo code Phil to get 35% off your first order, plus a free fiber and spice supplement. Hurry, this offer is only available while supplies last. So you did an article on Jay's, and it's about uh, about treasure hunting. Was that? It is about uh, treasure hunting. Uh, I'm glad that at some point, you know, when he was talking, I thought a weird thought. I think we're probably the only people in the world that have been on the cover of Hook and Barrel and GQ. <laughs> I don't think you were quite really? the cover. No, but, we were, but I, you were. There was an article. Yes. No, I think we were actually on the. I cover, don't think we were on the. Cover. Uh, but maybe I'm wrong. But we were actually in. Yeah, the article, which turned out to be quite controversial. Yeah. But uh, so that was an interesting statement because I couldn't imagine you're like, man, we need some people if you're going to come up with that idea of a magazine. And then all of a sudden, someone must have showed you a picture of us. And you're like, because you said Redneck GQ. I mean, that was actually the the duck show we had. That's right. That, that was the aura they presented because. Well, Jess, you, you claimed in the last podcast that you were a model of sorts. So I guess this I have. Continues uh, on. Uh, there's a local store. They, they have a store, of, a chain of one. And I wear their stuff because it's just an outdoor, it's good godly men selling outdoor stuff. Mostly fishing, but yeah, outdoor stuff. Yeah. And uh, I love their their products. So I go in there. But every time I wear something, they say people, I guess they pause the frame and zoom up where I got it. And uh, he said, we keep getting emails from y'all's podcast listeners wanting to buy, buy our stuff. So they keep giving me merchandise, you know. But uh, but your story is a lot like ours, even with the duck calls. Yeah, uh, I thought about that know, when he when yeah, Phil, Phil said, "Hey, I want to serve God, lead my family to to heaven." And 
we're just going to work hard and build duck calls. And that's kind of how it happened. It was a struggle. Yep. And, uh, but it just year after year, it just got better and better. I think John, it does something I've always said about our business and our family. And it sounds kind of similar to what you, you and your wife did is that the humility training part of that helps you realize when you find success that it wasn't you that did it. It was, it was God that made it possible, but you did the work in the process. That's why I love that natural and supernatural, because a lot of people say, well, I just want to sit around and wait for God to drop this in my lap. No, that's, he never said that. No. You know, what he said was, is I need you to do what I've called you to do, which sounds like what you guys have done. Well, we were reading on the last podcast about the Ephesians too. We're God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works. Now I know he was talking about, you know, representing Jesus in heaven, but that's what we do just in the little things of life that, People say, oh, there's something different about these people. But to answer your question, Al, which because I never answered your question, but uh, we uh, they took notice of our show. I don't know how y'all ever got wind of that. but uh, and, and basically, you know, I got into treasure hunting from this podcast because it was a hobby that I picked up and uh, really helping a family friend out who was going through cancer and... I just presented it to our audience on whether we ought to do a show or not. And they overwhelmingly convinced me to do that. And so we've done multiple seasons and, uh, but it, it's a, the irony of the show is that yes, we're out there using a metal detector. We're in the outdoors. There's a lot of great things about it. Uh, especially when, you know, when COVID happened, I'm like, well, why not be a, Metal detector. I mean, you're out there, you know, social distancing, whatever. We were out there, you know, finding treasures. But the irony of the show, because it's based on a biblical principle, you know, in Luke 15, on the reason Jesus gave those around him, uh, because they said, well, look, if you were a man of God, you wouldn't be sitting here eating with tax collectors and sinners. And he told three stories on why he was doing that. And it was basically the the idea that there's joy in life when something lost and is found, but there's also joy in heaven when a person is lost and they're found by God. And one of those stories was finding a lost coin, you know, and there was a lost sheep and obviously, you know, a lost son. But so that's how we did the show. We out, we go out there and we treasure hunt and we have a good time. We have fun, but then there's always a subtle irony of what is the true treasure of life. And so we did it, and I think it uh, it plants a seed in people's mind having that thought, you know, which we believe is ultimately Jesus finding finding your faith in Jesus. Absolutely, man, and um, you know, and and not, on even on the surface though, and, and it kind of goes back to a little bit about a hook and barrel too. We we hook somebody in through the celebrity or the story, but we actually seed the outdoors and all the great things the outdoors brings to society. And I think what I love about the show too is even though you you may attract, you, you attract people of all different demographics mm-hmm. and you're able to spread that message that you just described there. But the hook is you're trying to find treasure and it's a good way to bring in somebody that may be a non-believer, mm-hmm. um, somebody that may, you know, at any walk of life, right? They, they yeah. get hooked on this idea because everybody wants to find something cool like that. And then through the show, you get your message across. And yeah. I think that's that's similar to things that we try to do is find a uh, find a hook, and once you get the once you get the fish on the hook, you know you could get them to the boat, right. and that's kind of I think that's a fun way that you guys are doing it too. Yeah, there's one criteria we use. I don't know if we've ever said this in public, but I always go back to even in this show, the Duck Family Treasure. You know, I was one of the executive producers, so I'm watching the edit as it happens, the rough cut. And I'm like, would a 10-year-old kid enjoy this? And I got that from, because all the years of, uh, you know, that we did our duck show on, on A&E, what I was amazed at is how many kids watched that show, yeah. I- even today. Yeah. I mean, uh, just, I was just this past weekend, I mean, I had several now grown adults say, you know, when I was a kid, it, you know, I just fell in love with it. it. It was my happy place. And, uh, and I think that's a good, good model. Uh, cause when you think about the entertainment that's out there in the world today, your pickings are slim 
when you're looking at what will help mold kids into great human beings. So we've got ourselves a merchandise store. Um, one of the best ways to get the word out about what you enjoy doing is to have some merchandise uh, that tells other people uh, what you're like and what you're into. Uh, unashamedmerch.com is what ours is called. It has a special promo code, Unashamed10, which allows you to get 10% off of your order. So you can get the blind mug. There's Love Always Protect t-shirts. Uh, right here I'm holding in my hands a I Ride With King Jesus coffee mug with Dad's mug on the other side. of it. See what I did there, Jay? Um, so we'll keep building it as long as you keep uh, using them and telling people what you're into. Blaze Media also has some merchandise there, Blaze Heritage Collection. So a lot of good stuff out there, hats, stickers, mugs, sweaters, tons of stuff, a lot of fun. Head on over to unashamedmerch.com today. Use the promo code UNASHAMED10 for 10% off your order. It's a good deal. Unashamedmerch.com. Be sure you use the promo code UNASHAMED10 to get your 10% off. Check them out. Well, I met some kids at the event I was at that were too young for our show, but now, I mean, we're too little, but now we're watching it because it's a beautiful thing about television. You can watch it, you know, into perpetuity because there's episodes that are there. John, let me ask you, you uh, obviously love the outdoors, and when we're talking about the next generation, I mean, we got so many kids now that everything is on the computer, the tablet, the, you know, the phone, and what are people missing by not being outdoors. I mean, what, what has that done for you in terms of just your general life? What motivates you? I know you, you've gotten your wife involved with a lot of what you do as well. Uh, what, what would you say is the best selling point for outdoors, especially for the next generation? Well, for the next generation, what I would say is the outdoors. I think a lot of parents, there may be a selfish reason behind getting kids in the outdoors because they want, they want to see their kid catch the first fish or maybe even shoot their fir first deer. But those warm and fuzzies are not what about getting kids outdoors is about. What the outdoors presents is an opportunity to be uncomfortable. And, you know, I heard an interesting stat that only 2% of people will take the stairs when it's right next to an escalator. And you could sit there and the author I was listening to uh, said that he did this in the airport. And I did this in the airport just a few days ago when I was in Montana. And that that's about a true stat. Only 2% of people will take the stairs. And that goes back to the outdoors and living life uncomfortably. The outdoors teaches kids to not only appreciate what God's created in nature, but also to overcome adversity. And I think that's where a lot of our society is getting a little screwed up right now is mm -hmm. they sit on TikTok, they sit on their phones, and you could say whatever you want on this phone. Now, you know, if you say it to my face, I'm going to knock your teeth in. And, that, that, and, that's, and that's where I think, I think our society, I'm not, I'm not advocating for, for violence, but I'm saying yeah. you can't run your mouth in the real world like they do on social media. That's you can't say point. those hateful things. Great point. Um, and you also cannot, and, you know, kids get stuck and they just, they're just death scrolling on this phone and they're just getting sucked mm. in. And I will, I will argue any day. I think. There are a lot of bad things that happen in this world, but it really gets played up by media. That run, let kids run around your yard anymore or run around the neighborhood because they might get kidnapped. I think that does happen, but I think the media hysteria has, has um, definitely amplified us as parents, uh, our attention to it. And I think we may have overreacted to it. I think there is something to get your kids outside. Because I will, I will argue any day, the weirdos come together on the internet. There are going to be way more people that are going to find your kids on their phones than they mm -hmm. ever will running around the woods. Let your kids just go. And so, man, I, the outdoors is just so much more. I mean, I, I personally learned how to adapt and overcome some of the most difficult challenges in my life. I've been put in positions on mountainsides that I never thought I would get out of. Um, an, another one of our quotes from our pastors endureth persistence. We were stuck on the side of a mountain. My wife and I had no business being on Mount Katahdin when we were. We had, we had no training. We had, didn't even have real water. And we were up there trying to be mountaineers and we endured with persistence and we only got through it by, by the grace of God. I'll tell you that much. Um, we got into a real bad situation up there, but these uncomfortable situations, taking the stairs rather than the escalators, 
builds the calluses on not only physically on your hands, but on your mind to get through things. And the outdoors is one of the few places that actually provide that. So, so my pastor has a saying called it's, it's endure with persistence. And when we were stuck on that mountainside that we had no business being on, we had to endure with persistence. And, um, it was only really by the grace of God that we got off that thing and, and just sheer determination. But, but those are the things that, that the outdoors provide. It's, it not only does it build calluses on your hands, but it builds calluses on your mind. And that's what I think kids now need to become better humans. Cause a lot of these kids, man, they're really soft. All they do is watch TikTok videos and giggle about things. Yeah. But I'll tell you what, like I think kids should have fun, but they need to get out there. They need, they need, and, and, and nature is one of the few places in this world, in this world that we've developed where you could door dash Amazon prime and do anything. You really could live a very, very easy life. Yeah. Um, but you don't get that callousing that you need to be a better human. And the outdoors yeah. is one of the few places that provides that. And it's created a, a softness that's not good for us. And it's Which not really goes into our show. I mean, look, it because it looks fun by the time the editing is done into a short little show. But you know, we're hunting out there all day. And uh you know we've talked about yeah. it, how hard it is. Oh, it's this. exhausting. But it's so rewarding. I mean, it, it's like any any kind of uh something that puts you to the test, it's always much more rewarding you know, when you have success. And that sounds like a T-shirt, I guess. But uh, Could be one. I, <laughs> I was just, just this past Friday, so what is this? Uh, so three or four days ago, I get a call who was a, he, he was a, he's now a buddy of mine. I, I'll take him duck hunting sometimes, but he was friends with my son. And he would watch our duck show, and it's kind of one of the guys I'm talking about. But he called me, and uh, so I was thinking it was some kind of emergency because I haven't talked to him, and it's not duck season, obviously. We're in the middle of summertime. And he's like, Mr. Jace, I've really pulled a bad stunt because he's recently married. He said, I was cleaning out my fountain in, in the backyard, which immediately I thought of, Every time Phil was like, you know, too much time in the flower beds. You're recently <laughs> married and you're back there. But I didn't go there. And he said there was a bunch of algae and I was flicking it off my hand. And he said my wedding ring came off my hand. And he said, I've been looking for hours and I can't find it. And, I, and he, he said, I've seen your show. I mean, is there a way for you to find this? I was like, oh, I'll find that ring. You know, so I just, I said, I'll come over. And he said, when are you coming? I was like, right now, uh, you know? So I got my stuff and went over there. Well, I didn't know his whole family was there. I mean, they were having a big family gathering and, uh, except the wife. And I said, is she so upset at you about this that she just left? And he's like, no, but she's not happy. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, so actually it took a lot longer. Cause I was like, where did you, wh which way did your hand go? And there was this huge flower bed. And I'm like, what's in the flower bed? It has to be. He said, I heard it hit the ground. But I looked for maybe an hour. Nothing. I mean, I found some some little round things that go on rose bushes. And you know, I'm finding all kind of stuff that's in his yard, but I could not find that ring. And so I just kept getting further and further away. And he's like, it didn't go that far. I'm like, this detector does not lie. I I mean I, I've searched where we thought it was. So I just kept going further. He's now doubting your ability. Yeah, he was. And uh, and it was creating more drama. And look, people, I, I could tell the family was getting restless because <laughs> now they're like, the guy just got married. He's lost his wedding ring. What an idiot, you know. Now he's brought in some professional. And so did you even have the ring on? They're questioning now everything. Are you sure? Because you had the fungus. I mean, the algae on your hand. And so then about that time, I get a signal. And, and it was the right number and the right sound in my ear for gold. And I thought, I think we got a possibility here. And uh, so I put my, because this just happened. So I'm, I'm surface hunting. I'm like, why can't I see this? And I looked down, and then all of a sudden, I saw a little shine. And what had happened was, when he flicked that ring off, it bounced through the flower bed, started to roll. And you know how they etch around flower beds? Well, it was like a wall of three inches of dirt 
in that seam around the flower bed, and that ring was standing, standing up, up against that wall. You would have never found this. You, it was not visible from looking above it. The only reason I saw the shine is because I, I, my pinpointer was going on. Yeah. And I said, oh, Jace. And he looked, and I pulled up the ring, and look, that place went berserk. <laughs> You know, which I, I I don't know what is I was, that your first live audience uh, well, treasure hunt? It really you? was, and I tell this story because we did an episode in Duck Family Treasure where a girl, and this was in season one, had lost her wedding ring, and we just thought, well, we'll go find it, because she said my dog got it. Is what we think, and they had a long story on how that happened. You can watch the episode if you want to see. And so what my thought was, well, if the dog got it, let's just go detect every dog pile in the yard which to my surprise were hundreds yeah and we never found it so then we <laughs> detected the dog oh. Oh. you know and, and we never found it and it was such a bummer because i just thought we'll find it i mean because the producer was like well, what if we don't find it i was like well we don't find it but oh we're gonna find it well we didn't and so whether you have success or not we ran the we were we ran it that's what happened but I, I just felt vindicated here because I'm like, okay, I actually found a ring, you know, that a guy lost. And it's a long story, but it was, it was really fun. That just happened. And that's what I was going to say is it brought so much joy, like unrestrained response <laughs> we found this. So now we've got a whole new uh, way of doing treasure hunting in piles of dog poo. Yeah, <laughs> well, that was a good episode. Well, it was a funny episode because well, I was like, "Hey, I think you ought to metal John, detect that." John, dog. does that make you want to get involved in treasure hunting? <laughs> well, I actually, you know, I have a similar story that doesn't include dog poo. Um, <laughs> well, you said you wanted to be uncomfortable, so I thought I'd yeah, tell you that story. Yeah, yeah there you go. There you go. Uh, hey, listen, dog poo doesn't make me feel uncomfortable. I mean, unless it was like somehow on me or my boots or yeah. well, you step on it. or something. Yeah. yeah. Then, then it's yeah. uncomfortable. No. So, no, I was just down in Cabo San Lucas, uh, a few, a few months ago and my family was down by the waterside and I wanted to run down there and I had a, a longer necklace on and had a, uh, uh, had a cross pendant on it and I went running and all of a sudden I heard t -t -t ting and somehow it hit my watch <laughs> and I just saw this piece of gold and it was my it was my stepfather's actually and my stepfather had just passed away um last year or so and this thing goes flying through and right into the sand and i'm like oh my gosh we we're never going to find this so i and and the tide's coming in right and so we're we're staying out one of these like bougier like resorts which we never stay at but my wife was like well surely they have a metal detector i'm like well i just, I don't know about that. I mean, they got everything, but I don't know if they got a metal detector, but I'm sure maybe there's somebody's lost a wedding ring like that on the beach before here. And they, they didn't. And I spent, we spent hours sifting through the sand and the, and the tides coming in sifting and the tides get closer. And actually, honestly, at the end, there's a guy comes up to me and he's got this thick Alabama accent and, um, uh, and he tries to help me find it. Still couldn't find it. And I literally just kind of said, God, whoever finds this, this piece of gold, Hopefully it helps them more than more than helps me, and maybe they need the money or, or some reason they'll find it someday. And uh, I just kind of walked away. Well, sure enough, the next morning, talk about a crazy God thing. This woman comes up to me at breakfast at the at the buffet the next day, and she's like, "Excuse me, did you lose something on the beach yesterday?" And I'm like, "Yes, ma'am, I did." And she goes, "My husband, and it was that guy from Alabama." I was like. Oh, only only a hunter could find a gold, <laughs> a, a little tiny gold thing in the sand. You know how it went. He, got, I guess, he had spent another hour or so looking for it, and he probably was done drinking daiquiris on the beach or something, and just decided he wanted to go look for something to be a hunter. But he found that little tiny cross, and I happened to be at breakfast at seven a.m. because we were leaving for an early flight. The wife happened to be there, and she ran back to that room and got that got that little tiny cross that had somehow sunk down to that sand in Cabo San Lucas. And uh, it's amazing. Things, things go further when you hit them or throw them than you uh, actually yeah. think. It's, it's, it's like deer, right? Sometimes you're like, oh, it dropped. It didn't go 20. And next thing you know, it's like 150 yards away and it's dark. <laughs> and you're, yeah, exactly. and you're, you swore you then they're like, did I miss that thing? You know, it's amazing. 
We thought the same thing, you know, when I found that ring. It was about 20, over 20 yards, 25 maybe, from where he just flung it. Yeah. But, I, but, but you know, I think it rolled. Yeah, probably rolled. It, and then it, it rolled because he had pine straw on the flower bed. Yeah. But it, mm-hmm. it, it caused a lot, lot of joy, and we had a happy ending to that story. But that, I mean, look, I'm, I'm glad you promote the outdoor. We were all raised in the outdoors, and it taught us a lot of, a lot of skills that you discussed. And, uh, you know, I married a woman who is not an outdoors person, but deep down she loves that I am because it helps her feel safe and secure, especially every time there's some kind of panic, you know, that happens. Mm-hmm. Cause she's like, well, I got a man who can survive. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> It, it's not a small thing. But I love what you said earlier, John, about where the real danger lies. Uh, we were staying uh, at a place on the, this event I did this past weekend. We stopped in Texas and a, a friend of a friend of mine, and he's way out in the woods, and he's got this kind of set-apart little, you know, almost like a little cabin from his regular house. And they said, do you want to stay out there? You know, they made it into a nice little bedroom, and or, or would you rather stay in the house? And I'm like, no, we're out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, I would love to stay. I mean, they were thinking I would be scared to be out there. And I was like, no, no, no. We're far away from real danger. If we were in a city, then I would be yeah. a little bit worried about being out someplace. So you're exactly right. Uh, we just got a little bit of time left. Tell folks, what, what's the best way? Uh, Jace, your, your feature is going to be in the, is it July, August issue? Is that right, uh, John? Yeah, actually, just hit our homepage. Oh, cool. We launched the uh, we launched the digital content a little bit earlier than we launched the actual print magazine to get people excited to go pick that up. Um, but you could pick up uh, a hook and barrel at most of America's top retailers, including Bass Pro and Cabela's in Texas, Oklahoma, Louisiana, Arkansas, but all the other independent retailers coast to coast. But the best way to get it is to go to hookandbarrel.com. You could either subscribe there um, because it's always cheaper to pay the thirty nine ninety nine than go to Bass Pro because you always leave there a, a Benjamin lighter anytime I go to Bass Pro. <laughs> yeah. A uh, Benjamin but, or, or three, yeah, exactly. Or three, yeah. exactly. Uh, but uh, you could always you could always go to hookandbarrel dot com. You could also find the content there. So right now, Jace, uh, your article is underneath the new issue. Um, this this next issue's cover is the United States Olympic shooting team. They're searching for gold too in yeah. Paris this mm-hmm. year. And um, yeah, yours is right there, uh, right underneath there in the current issue. So you can pick it right up off the homepage, hookandbarrel.com. Well, John, it's been a pleasure. Thank you for coming on Unashamed. Thank you for what you do for the outdoors and the Almighty. So we pray blessings on you, brother. Thanks for listening to the Unashamed podcast. Help us out by rating us on iTunes. And don't miss an episode by subscribing on YouTube. And be sure to click that little bell to get notified about new episodes. And for even more content that you won't get anywhere else, Subscribe to Blaze TV at blazetv.com slash unashamed.